yo, Rosenberg, we wouldn't have got the information that it was you unless you told us. Yeah. yeah. I hate when people do that. Oh, I don't know where people are getting this theory from. Nigga, you said it. It's so gaslighting. That's like, definitely gaslighting. Yeah. Like, listen, you know, you, know, you may not have the power to make the decision. And again, we talked about Stephen A. Smith a little bit uh, a while ago. Yeah. Like, Stephen A. Smith, maybe you aren't the person who signs off on things, but some people, He's the executive I. producer, e. though. Rosenberg, right. you use your influence. <laughs> You use and, like that is your that is your platform your influence when you get on your 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 your, your flagship station radio station show and says I don't want him on yeah. somebody hears that that you're working with and somebody <laughs> makes decisions there is no coincidence you cannot convince me that there is a coincidence that these two artists were removed from the lineup after, you after said Rosenberg that. Peter fucking Karen <laughs> Rosenberg yeah. says hey I want them off he says I want them off the lineup me Peter. Peter. Like yeah. he said that, and we just played that for you guys. Like, and to draw the line at Trump, granted, I don't give a fuck. Who oh yeah, you we didn't even get to that part. Yeah, like, like, I don't give a fuck who you vote for. I'm I'm very big on that. Everybody makes decisions that behooves themselves. This is not a, a, politi a mm -hmm. politician podcast. Political. Or this isn't a political <laughs> podcast. Anything of that nature. Thank you, Savon. Shit, it was frazzling my brain. <laughs> but to see y'all draw the line at that. And y'all had nothing to say with maybe certain things that they've been involved with speaks volumes to me. Mm -hmm. It makes it seem like, all right, cool. You don't really give a fuck about real matters. You give a fuck about backlash and how things look. The optics. Because the optics, right? Because that first video you played me, Savon, it sounded like, yo, everybody going to be behind us. Yeah, I think he said it's that because late. he thought it yes. was going to like blow up Absolutely. very well. Absolutely. Like he thought everyone was going to rally behind Peter Rosenberg and be like, yeah, you're taking a stand. Which is crazy to me because if Trump and his people and his team had the insight enough to invite Brooklyn drill artists who have <laughs> immense effect on the youth, yeah. how could you possibly think? How could you possibly depict that they would side with y'all? Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Again, you can vote who you want to vote for. This is, this is not that type of podcast, but to see them draw the line at Trump, at a political view. It's selective outrage. That's definitely selective outrage. Ooh, Thank you, Pierre. Pierre. That's a great wording. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree more. It's so weird. And also, it's just another part of that, too, is like this is a very slippery slope because once you start, po not policing, but like giving people opportunities based on who they're voting for, like they literally took away their opportunity because they showed support for Trump. Yeah. That, that just like, le like, where is the line drawn? to like who you work with based on political affiliate. Like, I understand we all want to take a stance for something and we're all passionate. They're, they're you know, they're, um, they're hosts. Like they say their opinion all the time, but it's just a very slippery slope when you start doing stuff like that, honestly. And, and then the thing that with me is like, if you really of the culture, you know these two niggas got a, a little shaky path, right? You that's know what these I'm niggas, saying. You know these niggas be out doing shit, making like whatever the case they... may be, right? So you understand, like, if you really of the culture, you see the play. Yeah, facts. Some plays don't need to be explained. Yeah. Yo, so bro. if you see these two guys with a former presidents who have pardoned niggas. <laughs> Kodak Black. Why the fuck are you going to sit here and highlight the fact like, oh, And no, then take me off the lineup. Like, like, hey, I want them off the lineup. Again. First off, mm -hmm. real quick, Alex, mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. There you go, you go. The festival, you were the, the leading industry folks in this space. You guys no longer have that juice. Y'all need every single thing that you can get that will garner people to this show. Your show yeah. went from, and, and, and let me not even put out fake facts. It was the biggest thing in the region. I'll say that. Growing up for me, Summer Jam was the it concert, was the it festival. Mm -hmm. Like Reggie said, you could fuck around and have a Lil Wayne, Drake, Nicki Minaj, Chris Brown, Jay-Z. Not like, you could fuck around and have every star single star-powered mm -hmm. artist on this lineup because one, it was New York. Two, it was Hot 97. The history in Hot 97 is rich. The personalities at Hot 97 is rich. It is embedded in hip hop history. Mm -hmm. We could go as far back as Biggie and Tupac and 50 Cent, Game, Hove, Angie Martinez, yeah. Cypher Sounds. Yeah. Like there was a funk flex. Mm -hmm. it, it is so rich that somehow over the last decade, y'all have fucking fumbled that. It's crazy. It's super crazy. And shit like this, is on full display for people like us mm -hmm. who see through the bullshit. Yeah, mm -hmm. and again, right, it's uh, to the point you made earlier, people do things that make sense for them, right? Or people do things that behoove them. That's what I said when we were first talking about politics when I first brought it up, right? I just said Chef G's on a million dollar bill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Y'all know what bail means. That means the trial coming. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like it's not over. It's not over. And again, 
I don't give a fuck who you support, but if I was them and I seen what he just did for Kodak Black, <laughs> you're saying you about to like, go to Trump rally? If too? I was, it's a no brainer. At that if point. I was them, <laughs> yo, Bridget, real quick, a million dollar bill. If he was Chef G and Bridget. I was Polo the Dawn, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right that there with you, gang. That joke, la- that I'll joke be right landed. I'll with you, gang. That joke he landed. He done seen a nigga pardon uh, <laughs> Kodak Black, yeah. and he's assuming and predicting by the time that his trial starts, yeah. Trump will probably be in office. Yep. Again, Damn. people are doing things to behoove themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So to make a decision on behalf of everyone is crazy to me. But you got to, and again, it, it, it just speaks to like how out of touch some people are. And there's nothing, let me not say that. It is something wrong with it. <laughs> because at some point you got to get out the way. Some point you got to like adjust. Some point you got to like self-reflect. Yeah. But for you not to have the wherewithal or, or and, and maybe so, excuse me, maybe somebody checked him after. Like oh, they, Somebody definitely did. It sucks. Yeah, he got a call. Yeah. Because he's on Ebro's show, right? This is Ebro in the morning. Um, and, and Ebro has a position at Apple, yeah. right? And when I see Ebro on Apple compared to when I see him on Hot 97, and again, this is very regional, so I get it. If some of y'all in Nebraska don't know what Hot 97 and Ebro in the morning is, that is okay, <laughs> right? But Ebro- these, these are nationally syndicated shows, though. Hot 97 nationally syndicated? Yeah. I also feel like it's, a, it's an no, interesting I think conversation. No, yeah. But regardless- Somewhere. <laughs> You can listen to it somewhere. You can listen to it somewhere. That's all YouTube. <laughs> this is national as you get. <laughs> the whole you world. Ain't lying. You ain't lying. Yeah. And I'm not trying to knock nobody. No, no, but you're just curious. I think yeah. there is a difference when you see Ebro when he's on his Apple show with Nadeska and Lo. I think it's very different than when I, I see agree. him next to Rosenberg and Laura Styles. And again, no, no shade at Laura Styles. I think Laura Styles. She just stays out the way. She does her job. She, yeah, she is like, thing. and she's very consistent. She's very consistent yeah. in what it is that she does. Yeah, but I believe Rosenberg. He has he attempts to be a lot more outspoken, and it just never lands culturally. Yo, yeah. oh my That's god, can board. I just just yeah. a perfect example of this? Peter Rosenberg. I every time people say his name, I don't know why I always think of this. Ten times out of ten, he had Kelly Rowland on the show. Do you, does anyone know what I'm about? Yeah, Kelly Rowland. Kelly Rowland, the most kid. magnificent, beautiful, talented icon. Yeah. Like, and this is like not recent, like, but like a few years ago. So it was like well into like she was like older. And then he he asked her, like, basically the question was like, so what does it feel like to just like always be second in command, just like sitting, <laughs> sitting next to Beyonce all the time? Like, what does that feel like? Oh and my, like, oh my God. I was just like, you just cannot ask yeah. that. Like, at this, like, it, it maybe if it was like the first year of like Destiny's Child, they were teen. Maybe, maybe, because, but as a grown ass man and just asking this accomplished, st- stunning woman this, <laughs> like why? Like why? I just, I just always think about that. And if you don't see what's wrong with that question, guys, like it is just because what if Kelly would have asked him that with Ebro? It's just like why? Like, <laughs> what the shot? fuck are like, we doing? And she and she handled it with grace. She was like, you know what? Yeah. Light attracts light. Like I think we're both shining. Like she really handled it like a queen. But like I, th- I just always think about that, and I I just think that that represents a lot of his interviewing style. No offense. How are we talking about this? I, I I didn't anticipate us doing like a deep dive on Hot ninety seven. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, like, I anticipated I, it. I really didn't think like oh, you got some qualms. No, but because. <laughs> Growing up and in, 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 in being, so I like to, because me and uh, Pierre actually had a conversation over the weekend about the golden era of podcasts. In yeah, my opinion, gotcha. for oh, urban yeah. podcasts, right? Yep. It was the days of the early Joe Budden podcast. It was when Dinnerland had everything on lock. What is that, 20... 2015 to about 2018? Oh my God, the Bodega 20, Boys. You know what I'm saying? The Bodega Boys, they mm-hmm. were super a part of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Combat Jack. Oh, yes, Stone, yes. R.I.P. Jack. The early uh, iteration of the Joe Budden podcast. Um, even early Brilliant Idiot. Like, it was just this, this small... The Wild Wild West. That was like, <laughs> that was like 2012 Twitter. Yeah. It, it was just... <laughs> bro, and that's when I got introduced to podcasts, right? Yeah. And so, at that time, I was working in a warehouse, so I don't have to deal with people. I could just put my headphones in and listen to everything. Yeah. Unlimited hours. Yeah. I would listen to everything from Joe to Combat Jack, rest in peace... Uh, Tax Stone to Brilliant Idiots. <laughs> so you were working in the warehouse, right? Van Lathan. I was working. <laughs> you, got some, you got some Dave East on your playlist, right? I, I have all the Dave East. I know. That's a warehouse nigga special. <laughs> I had all the Dave <laughs> Now, all my niggas that yeah, work. during those years, yeah. All, yeah. all my niggas Dave that work 8 p.m. and 6 a.m. Yeah. They got every last yeah. Dave East album. I'm sorry. Keep going. Nah, you're good. <laughs> but for me, it, I, I just remember at that point, 
I was familiar. I was a, a lot more familiar with Ebro and Hot 97 at that time. And I feel like Ebro, his personality, his viewpoints, his messaging, his messaging, his delivery, I feel like it it should have, he should have a lot larger of a pool of people who are like invested in him. But I feel like his surrounding cast on that show and particularly Ebro in the morning. Mm-hmm. It pulls him down. But let's not forget though, too. Maybe even subconsciously. I don't, I don't know. But let's not forget too, right? He was also viewed as the old nigga right. that was hating. You're right. And I, I remember You're specifically right. with right. the, that. Was, oh, that I remember, was, oh, let me like, you fuck me being right. I remember specifically with the Uzi situation. Remember the Uzi situation, bro? I don't remember. When he was me. hating? When he was hating the hall, I forgot what it was. Um, I think that's part of the reason why, right? Now. So now yeah. the kids who are older in their latter 20s mm-hmm. and their mid 20s. They remember how they treated artists like Uzi and then mm-hmm. when they got number ones and everything, they kind of changed their tone. Yeah. Also like his <laughs> his little literal um handle on everything, his screen name <laughs> is Old Man Ebro. I feel yeah. like he just like has stuck with that persona and I respect it though because like yeah. you know, you got to have branding so. Absolutely. You think it's you think it's to his detriment at this point? I don't know cuz it's like that it, it's his thing. I don't know. I don't know if if that's. I don't know. That's a good point. I think it's yeah. a little half and half. Yeah. Uh, to say Vaughn's point about how he sees Ebro as two different people mm-hmm. at Apple Music and at Hot ninety seven. Sure. Absolutely second. Yeah. Because I do digest a lot of the Apple Music content that's posted on um uh, on YouTube with Nadeska and Low Key. Yeah. And the Ebro I see on there is a. Uh, he seems to kind of season. very seasoned, but also he doesn't die on his old man hill as much. Oh, yeah. Yeah. like he's, he's pretty open. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, I've seen Low Key, who is younger than Ebro. He's also he's kind of been the guy that been like, "Yo, Low Key, you're going a little bit too hard with some of these acts uh, that maybe people don't he's understand." Minded, like, yeah, but then as soon as I see him back at Hot ninety seven, <laughs> now nah, I think well, maybe too much. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I think they fit where they are because even um, Peter Rosenberg, when he's on ESPN Radio, it's almost night and day difference. Yeah. You ain't seen him on um, WWE. You know, Rosenberg do WWE too. Yeah, maybe his role on the show is very, very, very old man Ebro when right. he's on with his Hot 97 cast. And then with the Apple Music stuff, it's more like a relaxed music <laughs> yeah, conversation. he's very relaxed. Um, and he's more open to new stuff on Apple Music. And also, you need, in this hip-hop space, yeah. you do need people who have that, like, old man persona just right. to, like, keep those values and just, like, views from that time. So, I don't know. Yeah. And again, man, like, I don't. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't even know. I was just really disappointed in Hot ninety seven over the last week. Yeah. Up until I saw Martin and Will, I was like, "Holy shit!" Martin and Will went to Hot ninety seven, but <laughs> outside of that, bro, like mm-hmm. they, it, it's just so outdated mm-hmm. and it's sad because they were a major staple. Like they were the radio, like mm-hmm. on both coasts when the world was divided, when this country, when hip hop was divided mm-hmm. in the West Coast and East Coast, Coast yeah, yeah. Hot 97 was the one mm-hmm. staple where you couldn't deny. And Charlemagne, Envy, and Ye teaming up did not help them. Not at all. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. yeah not That right. did not help them. Even on, yo, oh, at yeah. all. Whenever I'm on my commute or in the car in the morning, yeah, I used to always go between either 1051, which is Power 105, or 971, I think. Uh, yeah, 97. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. These days, Hot 97 is never even a thought. I go right to, <laughs> oh I go, I go right to Power 105. I'm just happy you still listen to the radio. Yeah, yeah. Aww. I do that too sometimes. Yeah, man. I don't know. We'll see. Again, I know right. this was a, a regionally biased conversation, but if you're somebody that I mean, doesn't or who isn't familiar, please go tap in. Let us know y'all thoughts on it. Also, if you're from like LA or like a really big city down south or something, like maybe tell us what's going on with your legacy radio. Yeah. Um, you know, staples in your city. That that'll be very interesting. Literally write us a paragraph in the comments. I'm mm-hmm. interested. Yeah. And I hope somebody at Hot 97 heard us. 